Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Commitment Field on the campus of Oklahoma Bible Academy in Enid, Oklahoma, for tonight's first round playoff game between your Oklahoma Bible Academy Trojans and the Balco Forgan Bulls. We're about four and a half minutes away from kickoff here in uh, beautiful Enid, Oklahoma. It's a cool evening here on the Southern Plains. Brisk wind blowing out of the north, so as you look at the screen there, the north is to your left. Uh, the wind blowing left to right here, pretty steady breeze uh, blowing out of the north here on the southern plains. And that could come into effect here on this cool evening. No precip precipitation today, so it's been rather dry. The field is pretty drenched because we've had some pretty heavy rains uh, last night. Uh, and so you might be able to see some darker spots on the field where, where the water hasn't completely drained off just yet. But uh, it looks to be a beautiful foot night for football here in Enid. Your OBA Trojans coming in with a record of 10-0, and the first ever undefeated season in OBA football history. Their last three games were a 48-0 win over Garber, a 51-6 win over Kremlin, and a 48-0 win over Pond Creek. All three victories coming via the mercy rule, uh, being up by 45 or more after halftime. Balco Forgan coming in with a record of 7-3. and three. They finished 2-2 two and two in District B1, which placed them in a three-way tie for second place. And after um, adding up all the points for and points against, uh, Balco Forgan ended up finishing fourth in District B1, despite the fact that three teams had a 2-2 two and two record. Uh, their point differential uh, dropped them to fourth place in the district, despite a pretty good 7-3 and three overall record. The Bulls, coached by Jake Regeer, are the 2021 state runner-up. So these, this team has some playoff experience going all the way to the championship game before losing to Laverne last year in the, in the state finals. These two teams have two common opponents. Both of them have played Kremlin, Hillsdale, and Cherokee, and both teams won both of those games via the 45-point mercy rule earlier in the season. So it looks to be like this is going to be a – an old-fashioned playoff showdown between two really good programs here tonight. I would not expect, or let me should say, I, I should say, I would be surprised if we saw a 45-point mercy rule game tonight. I would imagine this one is going to go the distance, and it's going to be a tight one uh, between two good programs. Trojans coached by Chris Kayot, head coach, plenty of playoff experience uh, coming from Coach Kayot, having won a state championship. Uh, with a uh, with the uh, Laverne Tigers, and then also uh, having a runner-up finish while at Laverne as well. A lot of playoff experience in his years also coaching at Fairview. So Coach Kayot brings a lot of playoff experience to the sidelines of these OBA Trojans. Um, these seniors uh, on OBA, we have four seniors for the Trojans, have a little bit of playoff experience because before OBA dropped to eight-man football last year, uh, OBA made its first playoff appearance in 11-man football when these young men were sophomores. So they have had a little bit of playoff experience in these four seniors. The uh, captains for your, the Trojans tonight are those same four seniors, number seven, Bodie Boyston, number 21, Harry Nunez, number 80, Holden Caldwell, and number 35, Jake Colby, are the captains for the Trojans. Balco sends a host of people out for the uh, coin toss. It's like eight young men. The, the, the whole starting lineup has um, come out for the, uh, for the coin toss here uh, before the game starts. So... As we wait to see a signal from the official as to who wins the coin toss, uh, a lot of pregame discussion. This is a playoff game, so uh, the atmosphere is a little more tense. This is a winner go home situation for both teams, so you're going to see maximum effort coming from both the team in black and the team in white tonight. Eurobia Trojans wearing all black, white numbers, trimmed in red. Balco Forgan wearing all white, maroon numbers. So there's the toss. The official is talking. It looks like. He's talking to Balco. So we're about ready to go here. So they're going to line up. OBA is going to take the north end zone. The Trojans have won the toss and elected to receive to start the game. And they will be in the north end zone. So they will have the wind at their back. I would imagine Coach K on the coaching staff. Uh, made that choice to hopefully get out to a quick start offensively and hopefully they can jump out to a lead early here in the first quarter. 
Balco Forgan led by senior quarterback Peyton Conkle. 5'9", 165-pound senior uh, starts at quarterback. He'll be wearing number zero. You'll see him in action a lot uh, for Balco. According to uh, the scouting report we have, Balco primarily a running team, a short passing game team. But you can really kind of throw a lot of the regular season stuff out the window when it comes to playoffs because everyone realizes this is a winner go home situation for both teams, so they're likely to pull out all the stops. As the team comes onto the field, here come the OBA Trojans. You'll see them streaming onto the field from the left side of your screen now. A lot of energy on both sidelines. Playoff adrenaline is definitely kicking in with these young men as they prepare for the opening kickoff. We would like to acknowledge our sponsor for tonight's game, Jansen GMC, right here in Enid, Oklahoma, is our title sponsor for tonight's game. We'd like to thank the folks at Jansen for always being a big supporter of Trojan Athletics. A little bit of tension in the air here tonight at Commitment Field that we haven't felt in several weeks as the Trojan kind of marched through their uh, past several opponents so a lot of energy buzzing around the stadium here this evening. Again, it's a, it's a cool evening here in Enid as the temperature has dropped uh, over the past couple of days. Currently 38 degrees. Slight breeze blowing out of the north towards the south. It's kind of gusty, so you'll s we'll see the flag standing straight out from time to time and then just kind of hanging uh, gently straight down from time to time. So B Balco Forgan set to get us underway. Judd Cheatham deep, deep for the Trojans. And there's the kick, kind of the pooch to the side. Cheatham will field that at about the 28-yard line and head towards the near sideline. Across the 30, 35, 40, across the 45, across the 50, into bull territory and forced out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Great starting field position for the Trojan offense. Judd Cheatham, one of the offensive leaders for the Trojans, all-purpose yards are his specialty. He can run, he can catch, and as you just saw, he's very effective in the special teams. Trojan offense led by senior quarterback Bodie Boyston, wearing number seven. You'll see him controlling this offense. Tight formation to start things. Tight end Jake Colby, Ian Easton in the backfield. Boyston up under center. Takes the snap, handoff to Ian, and he keeps it. Pulls it out of Easton's belly. Bodie Boyston keeps it. Rumbles for about six yards, so it'll be second down. Rushing stats, Boyston averaging 6.5 yards, yards per carry this year, and that's right about what he got, maybe a little bit more. Looks to be about second and three here for the Trojans. Kind of a read option there for Bodie Boyston. He had it in Ian Easton's belly and then pulled it out the last second, took it around the edge. Now Easton and Cheatham both in the backfield, Boyston in the shotgun. Hand off to Easton up the middle. He's met almost immediately by the Balco defense, and that's going to be a short loss. That was senior Peyton Conkle up from his safety position, shooting through the ga gap rather quickly, making it third and five for the Trojans. Trojans trying to establish the run here early. As Coach Kayot signals the plays into Boydston. Cheatham in the backfield to the left of the quarterback, Ian Easton to the right of the quarterback. Jake Colby is your tight end. It's going to be an option play to the near side. Easton with the block, pitch out to Cheatham. The ball's on the ground. Looks like Cheatham has it back. Now Boydston falls on it. The Balco defense was ready for that option play and breaks it up almost immediately. It's like the lead blocker, Easton, kind of stumbled and was able to make contact, but maybe not totally block his man who, who was able to get in the backfield and disrupt the timing of the play. No indication of a punt here at this moment. Looks like the Trojans will go ahead and go for it here with the ball in Balco territory. But it is fourth down and about 15 for the Trojan offense. Stiff test early here uh, for the Trojan offense put forth by the Balco defense. Jake Colby in the slot on the near side. Harry Nunez on the far side. Judd Cheatham behind the quarterback. We had movement before the snap, but no flag. Boyson looking deep. He finds Harry Nunez. He breaks a tackle. He's still going. 20 to 25 out of bounds at the 24-yard line. First down, Trojans. 
Bodie Boyson is standing tall in the pocket, taking his time in no hurry. Great job by the offensive line, giving Bodie plenty of time. Harrison Crow in there, making some great blocks. Nick Beckman also providing Boydston with some time, and it looks like Jackson Crow also in there, giving their senior quarterback time to find an open receiver, giving Harry Nunez time to come open across the middle. First down OBA at the 25. Cheatham goes in motion. Broken play up the middle. Easton didn't get the handoff from Boydston. They then turned around and gave it to him again. So it's almost like they handed it off twice, and Easton rumbles forward for about four yards despite the uh, broken timing on the play. The Trojans able to make that a, a positive yardage play. Offense moving kind of quickly now. A little out of sync, but they are uh, hustling up to the line. Easton in the backfield, Cheatham in motion. Boyce is going to keep this one right up the middle. Picks his way forward. It's going to be close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. And it looks like it's third and two for the Trojans. Short gain there for Boyston, about three yards. So third and two for OBA. Crow, Crow, and Beckman on the offensive line. Jake Colby at tight end. Cheatham comes in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Judge Cheatham. First time he's handled the ball via the offense, and he's going to cut forward to get enough for the first down. And they move the chains. So it's going to be first and goal just inside the 10-yard line, about the 9.5. Not quite far enough to get a first down before scoring, so the Trojans will have to put it into the end zone here. 8.32 to go here in the first quarter. Trojans with a, a steady drive, although, although it has been a little bit out of sync. The Trojans still having success moving the ball. Two running backs behind Boyston, who's under center. Hard count from Boyston. Then just a sneak right up the middle, and that's going to be good for about three, maybe four yards as Bodie Boyston, big 6-4 frame. Really, if Bodie just falls forward, he's going to gain two yards for you. Um, puts it at second and goal right about the five-yard line now. Eight minutes to go here in the first first period. Again, the tight formation for the Trojans. Cheatham in the slot, now going in motion. Boyce is going to keep this one again. He's going to get around to the edge, try and get outside. He cuts it inside. No, it's going to be no gain on the play there. Maybe a yard. He might have gotten in from the five to the four. Looks like the Trojan offense is trying to use Judd Cheatham as a bit of a decoy. As uh, Usually, by this point in the game, he's carried the ball already three or four times, and he's only handled it once. 7.24 to go in the first period. Third and goal from about the four-and-a-half-yard line. Look for a tight end, Jake Colby. Perhaps a play-action play here from the Trojans. So everyone stopped. I didn't see a flag anywhere. Do we have a delay? And it's going to be false start on the Trojans, so that's going to push them back to the nine and make it third and goal from the nine-yard line. This is still two-down territory for the Trojans. I can't imagine they would kick a field goal here. I don't think they've kicked a single three-pointer all year long. They have kicked some extra points, but not a lot of field goals. So Nunez wide to the left. Cheatham coming in motion. Hand off to Judge Cheatham around the edge. Skirts the first. Reaches for the goal line. No signal. Marked down at the one-foot line. Didn't quite get in there. Great blocking downfield from Nunez. That'll make it fourth and goal at the goal line. So, yeah, that's inside the one-yard line. Maybe the, a football length to get in. Tight formation for OBA. You got Easton and Cheatham in the backfield. Boyce is just going to keep it. The whole line moves into the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. Bodie Boyson with the quarterback keeper powers in for the touchdown, making your score OBA 6, Balco Forgan 0. Bodie Boyston with his 20th touchdown of the season powers that one in for six Trojan points, capping off a successful opening drive for OBA. 6.27 to go in the first period. OBA will go for two, as is their norm. They have a deep well of two-point conversion plays from which to draw. They've been really successful in two-point conversions this year. Cheatham goes in motion. Boyson hands to Cheatham, trying to run around the outside. He cuts it up to the inside, into the end zone. Two-point conversion is good. OBA 8, 
Balco Forgan, zero. So great opening drive there from the Trojans. Took them a few plays to kind of find their rhythm. Uh, had at least two broken plays, maybe three broken plays, and and uh, maybe it's just some mistiming and a, a tackle for loss in there, and then a, then a uh, false start penalty as well. Uh, able to overcome maybe some some playoff jitters or some nervousness, or maybe they're just cold. I don't know, but the Trojans are able to overcome that and punch the ball into the end zone. So we'll take a quick break here at obatrojans.tv. And we are back here. Commitment Field on the campus of Oklahoma Bible Academy. Your OBA Trojans lead 8-0, to 6.27 left to go in the first period. As Harry Nunez tees the ball up, preparing for OBA's first kickoff of the day. This has been a real strength for the Trojans. Nunez has kicked 20 balls into the end zone for 20 touchbacks this season. It's a real asset for the Trojan defense to know that he has that capability. Wind is at Harry's back, so I would imagine he would kick this one deep. And he does. Line drive kick. Going to be over the deep man's head into the end zone. Touchback Trojans. As I was stating earlier, Harry Nunez has that ability, and it's a great asset for the Trojan defense to know that he can kick that deep, put it into the end zone, and the, the opposition has to start at the 20-yard line. Uh, not every team has that luxury. Now, the Trojans have used the pooch kick and the onside kick periodically throughout the year, but uh, on a night like tonight when the wind's at Harry's back, he's going to put that thing in the end zone and the defense is going to try and uh, get a stop. Two receivers to the near side of the field. Now a shift in formation. A lot of moving around there from the Trojans, and more moving around. They keep shifting, trying to catch the Trojans in a mismatch here. They're using the whole play clock, too. That's going to be a keeper for the quarterback. He gets around the edge, forced out of bounds. After about a seven, maybe eight-yard gain, Peyton Conkle, we've talked about him before the game started, the senior quarterback, carries a big load for this Balco Forgan offense. So about a seven-yard gain brings up second and two, maybe, or second and three, maybe three and a half. So running back behind. Conkle in the backfield, snap to Conkle, he fakes the pitch, goes right up the middle, and actually this is senior number 20, Nathan Smith, it's going to be a long run, and he's going to he's going to take it to the house, that's going to be a touchdown for Balco Forgan on their second play from scrimmage, that senior Nathan Smith, the running back, takes a direct snap, they don't snap it to Conkle, a direct snap to the running back, he goes right up the middle, and that big Balco front line was able to blast a hole right in the middle of the Trojan defense, and that is something the Trojan coaching staff will have to address moving forward. As Balco just made that look easy, they now will go for two as the score is OBA 8, Balco 6. Flag comes down on the play. Everyone kind of stops. I'm going to assume that's on the offense. No signal when the uh, running back went into the end zone. Again, that was Smith on the carry. False start on Balco, so they'll push them back five yards. It'll be a longer two-point conversion here. Trojan defense waiting patiently for uh, Balco to get their play signaled in as the play clock, clock counts down to about 10 seconds now as Balco taking their time. I must confess I don't know enough about Balco to know uh, their normal rhythm. Smith in at quarterback now. It's going to be an option to the right side. He has a pitch man. Another flag comes out. It's going to be a halfback pass. I'm going to guess just by the design of the play that's going to be a holding p penalty. 
Another false start. So they're going to march them back five more yards. Unfortunately for the Trojans, they can't just deny, decline the penalty because that it's a dead ball on the snap on a false start, I think. No, they can decline that. Okay, so the penalty is declined, so the extra point is no good, making your score OBA 8, Balco Forgan Bulls 6. Impressive run there from Balco. Running back Nathan Smith just made it look easy running through this Trojan defense that is uh, very used to shoot, pitching shutouts this season as they've got four shutouts of their ten wins. Four of them have been shutouts, uh, including their last win last week in the season finale over Pond Creek Hunter. Actually, their last two games are their last two home games. Kremlin Hillsdale was able to punch one into the end zone late in the game during uh, mop-up time. But the Trojans shut out both Garber and Pond Creek in the last two games here at Commitment Field. So it's been a, a pretty significant home field advantage for the Trojans this year, especially defensively. Uh, but the Balco Forgan Bulls are not impressed by that. March down the field easily in two plays and punch it into the end zone. Trojans look like they're expecting an onside kick here. A lot of uh, receivers and running backs in, in the uh, special teams unit at the moment. Judd Cheatham is deep. So Conkle to kick off. This one's going to squib and take a big hop. Handled in the middle of the field by Caleb Mendoza. He's going to bring it to the near side. Tries to plant his feet and cut, foot and cut back in, but loses his footing right at the 40-yard line and slides to the ground. Ty Smith, the senior tight end slash linebacker for uh, Balco Forgan, and just kind of falls on top of Caleb uh, to be... Uh, credited with the tackle. So first down Trojans just outside the 40 yard line, not quite to the 41. 59 and a half yards from pay dirt. So Boyson brings the offense back to the line. Boyson under center, Cheatham back in the backfield. It's going to be a pitch to Judd Cheatham to the far side. Now Boyson out front blocking. Cheatham's going to break a tackle. It's going to be a foot race. Cheatham and Conkle, Cheatham and Conkle. Conkle's able to force him out of bounds and bring him down at about the 28-yard line, just outside the 30-yard line of Balco Forgan. Great run by OBA and Judd Sheetham. Nice blocking there from the offensive line, from the receiving core, and from the quarterback, Bodie Boyston. Judd Sheetham averaging 11 yards per carry this year. Uh, that one was good for about 35, so that's not going to hurt the old average very much at all for the junior running back number 10, Judd Sheetham. Great way to start a drive for the Trojans. Ian Easton in the slot. Judd Cheatham wide to the left. Boyson takes a snap. He's just going to swing it right wide. That's just basically a running play that starts with a pass to the flat. Cheatham's going to get about five yards on that one. Trojans have used that formation quite a bit throughout the year. Instead of handing it off to Cheatham, they just swing that little swing pass out there and try and get, try and get Judd into open space. Five-yard gain, second and five for OBA. And we've got a stoppage of play. An official timeout. And now they wind the clock. So we're back underway. Cheatham in the slot on the far side. It's going to be a pass. Looking out to the flat for, for Colby. Just out of reach. Nice coverage there from number eight, Jordan McGowan. Another senior for Balco. Wide receiver slash safety. He's six foot, 170 pounds, but Jake Colby's a solid 6'4". Jake might even be 6'5". He definitely has a, a bit of a size advantage there against the six foot tall senior, something the Trojans might exploit later on. So that brings up third and about five for the Trojans. Not quite in the red zone as the ball kind of sits right on the 20-yard line, or right outside the 20-yard line, I should say. Cheatham wide to the left, Easton in the backfield with Boyce and Colby in at tight end. Hand off to Ian Easton. He's going to head up the middle. Now tries to bounce it outside. Positive yardage there. It looks like he might have the first down. Let's wait for a signal. And they do signal. First down Trojans. Nice run there from Ian Easton. Junior number 12. Ian Easton averaging about 7.7 .7 yards per carry. So definitely a um, positive yardage player for the Trojans. 4.44 to go in the first period. The Trojans are on the march again. 
Again, the Trojans in the tight formation. This time, Judd Sheetham spreads out wide to the right side. Ian Easton in the backfield with Boydston. Boyson fakes the handoff and keeps it himself right up the middle. He's going to break free. 5, 10, 10, 5, touchdown Trojans. Bodie Boyston, 23-yard scamper for the senior quarterback. Bodie Boyston, his 21st of the year. Six more points for the Trojans. Making your score OBA 14, Balco 6, 4.23 to go in the first half. Trojans will go for two here. Again, a deep well of play choices here for Buddy Boyston and head coach Chris Kayot. Harry Nunez wide to the left. Cheatham goes in motion. Again, the handoff to Cheatham. He cuts it upfield, and this time Balco's ready for it. It's going to be close, and the two-point conversion is no good. Stop just short of the goal line. Balco was ready for that one and makes the stop, but the Trojans have the lead, 14-6, to an eight-point lead over the Balco, Balco Forgan Bulls. As we look down the Balco Forgan lineup, Several seniors out there on the field. Peyton Conkle, a senior. Deacon Martin, a senior. Jordan McGowan, a senior. Chisholm Freeman is a senior. Nathan Smith, who had the long touchdown runs, a senior. Ty Smith, Juan Magana, Martial Diaz, Cooper Rodkey. I mean, the majority of the guys on the field for Balco are seniors. Uh, and the reason I'm making that point is these seniors have been in the playoffs. These seniors went to the state championship game last year. They feel like they have unfinished business no matter what their regular season record is. So Balco Forgan's not going to be rattled by an eight-point deficit. I would imagine they'll come out here and try and establish themselves again offensively. Tonight's game brought to you by Jansen GMC, www.jansengmc.com, or you can call them at 1-800-749-6537. Jansen GMC in Enid, Oklahoma. Thank you for your sponsorship. As the Trojans prepare to kick it away again, 4.23 to go in the first period. Harry Nunez getting set up to kick off. We've already talked about his proclivity to put the ball into the end zone, not allowing opponents to uh, use their special team to advance the ball. The wind is barely blowing right now. The flag's hanging almost straight down as Nunez prepares to kick off. Another line drive kick that's going to hit the ground at about the 10 and... Roll into, I can't tell if it went in the end zone or out of bounds. It went out, and the flag comes out. It went out of bounds right in front of the pylon. Almost made it to the end zone and then just kind of took a left turn at about the two-yard line and skipped out of bounds. So that'll help Balco Forgan's cause and push them up the field just a little bit farther than the 20, and they'll start at the 30, at the 35-yard line. Correction, they'll start at the 30-yard line. So we'll see what adjustments Coach Kayot and the coaching staff have made here defensively to try and stop this Balco Forgan offense. Yeah, it is the 35-yard line. Big front three for Balco that the Trojans are going to have to uh, find a solution to. Nathan Smith in there along with Peyton Conkle. Conkle comes in motion. Hand off to Smith. Ooh, that looked like it hurt. There at the end of the play, Smith was running and rolled up on his tight end's feet. That's number 19, Levi Milliken, a sophomore. The tackle, I mean, nothing intentional there. The, the running back just kind of rolled up behind his blocker and, and landed on his ankle. So glad to see he's still out there playing. Option play, Smith keeps it. Solid hit there by the Trojan defense. Bodie Boydston steps in from his defensive end position and puts – shoulder to hip and knocks Smith backwards. So third and six for the Balco Forgan Bulls. Nathan Smith, he's listed at running back, but he's played quarterback the majority of Balco's snaps so far tonight. Smith's going to be an option play to the far side. Pitch out to number eight. It's going to be stopped short of the first down. Jordan McGowan on the carry, a senior. Six foot, 175, 170-pound senior in there. McGowan on the carry makes it fourth and about two. So big early play here in the game. 3-10 to go in the first period of the Trojan defense looking to make a stop here. Hard count there from Balco trying to get an offensive or, or uh, offsides call. Doesn't work. 
Smith's going to keep it, and he's going to get around the far edge. Makes a move on Judd Cheatham, and there's the burner again. He's being pursued by Mendoza. Tried to trip him up, cannot get him. Touchdown again, Nathan Smith. The senior running back slash quarterback for Balco is tearing seams in the Trojan defense. That'll make your score 14 to 12. OBA still leads by two points as Balco prepares to go for two here after another Nathan Smith touchdown. We'll have Conkle back in at quarterback here. Smith in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the far side, one to the near side. Looking for the uh, lob pass to the near side. It's pulled in. Two-point conversion is good. Harry Nunez on the coverage. Nice catch there from number eight, Jordan McGowan. Makes the two-point conversion good, and that'll tie things up 14 apiece here at Commitment Field. The Trojans are in for a battle. Balco Forgan is not going away. So we'll take another break here. 2.48 to go here in the first period. We're all tied up 14-0 at obatrojans.tv. Welcome back to Commitment Field on the campus of Oklahoma Bible Academy here in Enid, Oklahoma. And we've got a playoff showdown on our hands. 2.48 to go here in the first period. It is tied 14 apiece. Differing styles so far, kind of uh, contrary to what OBA is used to. OBA with a methodical long drives, taking a lot of possession time and scoring on both of their drives. Balco. Quick strike offense for Balco as the kickoff goes to Cheatham. He fields it at the 25, trying to get it around the edge at the 30. Up to the 34, 35, cuts inside and chopped down at about the 37-yard line. It'll be first down Trojans at the 37, and Cheatham is down. Taking his time getting up as he was chopped down on the tackle, but then the next Balco bull just landed right on top of, of Judd Cheatham. Cheatham back up on his feet, but taking his time as Bodie Boyson brings the offense out onto the field. Ian Easton in the backfield. Jake Colby in the slot. Bodie Boyson scrambles forward for about a three and a half, four yard gain. So it'll be second down for the Trojans. Coach Chris Kayot signaling in the plays to Boydston. Kayla Mendoza in for OBA. Two oh five to go in the first period. Boydston in the shotgun formation. Two receivers wide to the far side of the field. One in the slot on the near side. Boyson back to pass. Pump fakes. Now he looks deep. He's got Jake Colby wide open just off the fingertips. The play fake worked perfectly. Colby was wide open. Just a little gust of wind put a little more air under that ball, and it was just out of reach for the senior tight end, Jake Colby. Boyson and Colby usually a really reliable link up for this Trojan offense. If that ball is six inches shorter, the Trojans are up 20 to 14 right now because Colby was running free in the Balco backfield. Boyson doing what he does, buying time in the pocket. A pump fake uh, gets a Balco defensive lineman up in the air, buys himself enough time, but just cannot connect. So third down for the Trojans. Boyson hands off to Cheatham as he heads to the far side of the field. He's got Easton out front. Block, good block by Ian Easton. That's going to be a forced out of bounds on the far side of the field. First down, Trojans. Nice downfield blocking from the running back, Ian Easton, helping out his teammate, Judd Cheatham. Harry Nunez also out there blocking downfield. Great job from the offensive line, as it's good to see Judd Cheatham back out on the field after 
uh, a scary moment there when he's down on the ground. That would that would really be a blow to these uh, these Trojans to not have number 10 on the field. Boyson kind of stumbles out. He's looking deep again. He's got two men open. It's going to be Nunez. He hauls it in, backpedals, tries to get to the end zone, doesn't quite make it, down into the two-yard line. Long throw from Boyson. He didn't want to overthrow this one, so I think he took a little off of that one. Harry had to slow up to catch it, but better be safe than sorry. First down, Trojans at the three-yard line. Nice completion there from Boyson to a fellow senior, Harry Nunez. Boyson, Nunez, and Colby are pretty lethal combinations. Then when you throw in Judd Cheatham uh, in the ground game and in, in his receiving ability as well, this Trojan offense has the potential to be high octane. So first and goal at the two-yard line for OBA. Tight formation for OBA. Three running backs. It's going to be a handoff to Cheatham as he skirts, dances, dives for the end zone. Touchdown, OBA. Judd Cheatham into the end zone. 103 to go in the first period. And your Trojans lead 20 to 14. That drive was a little more indicative of what we usually see from the Trojans. A little more quick strike there from OBA. As the Trojans take a six-point lead, and we might be destined for a high-scoring game here. Trojan defense is going to have to find a way to, to solve the riddle of, of senior Nathan Smith. And if they can do that, perhaps they can open up this game. So snap to Boyson. This time he hands off to East, and a flag comes in late. And it's offsides on the defense. I'm assuming Easton didn't make it into the end zone. There was never a signal. They, they threw the flag, and no one ever signaled if he got in. So they're going to move the ball a yard forward. So instead of from the two, they're at the one for this two-point conversion, 103 to go in the first period. So Boyce will just to keep this one fall forward. Two-point conversion is good. As we stated earlier, Bodie's 6'5", and if he just falls forward, they're going to gain a couple of yards. So the two-point conversion is good. OBA 22, Balco 14. And if we keep this pace with a minute to go, we're looking at a game in the 70s and 80s by the time we get to the fourth quarter, unless one of these defenses can solve a riddle of their opponent's offense. So we'll take a quick break here and hear a word from our sponsor, Jansen GMC, on OBATrojans.tv. And we are back. Class B, first round playoff action. Balco Forgan Bulls 14, OBA Trojans 22. And so far, we're getting exactly what a playoff game should be. And that looks to be a showdown. Balco Forgan coming in with a 7-3 and three record out of District B1. Taking on the undefeated OBA Trojans and not blinking. Balco is not impressed with that undefeated record. And OBA is in for a battle. Harry Nunez with the kickoff. Put some air underneath this one. It's going to be fielded about the 10-yard line. Trojan defense in pursuit, wrapped up there by Corbin Burrell at, a, at the 15-yard line. Corbin Burrell, kind of a special team specialist. If you can remember back in the old days, the Dallas Cowboys had a guy named Billy Bates, and that, that was just his thing. He always made special teams tackles. And Corbin Burrell is the Billy Bates for these OBA Trojans. He is always involved in special teams play. You'll see him in there on defense as well, really good at getting into the backfield and disrupting the timing of the opposing offense. So 57 seconds to go here in the first period. Smith in at quarterback again. It's going to be an option to the far side. Smith's going to keep it up the middle. This time the Trojan defense is a little more stingy. He doesn't go for 60 or 70 yards, only about four as Nick Beckman grabs him by the legs as he goes by and brings him down. About four-yard gain, making it second and six as the clock continues to tick. 40 seconds to go in the first period. That Balco offensive line with a noticeable size advantage on this Trojan defense, so they're going to have to use their speed and their leverage wisely. Snap here, and it's going to be a runoff tackle. Cheatham gets in there and gets some feet. Holden Caldwell gets on top and brings him down, but not before a first down is gained. 
by Balco Forgan. That's senior number eight, Jordan McGowan. Balco has used four different quarterbacks here. That was a direct snap to McGowan, so we're going to count him as a quarterback. McGowan's played quarterback. Sideline warning on Balco. Or on OBA, sorry. Sideline warning on OBA. McGowan has taken snaps. Conkle has taken snaps. Nathan Smith has taken snaps. So Balco really mixing up the offensive playbook here. This one looks like it'll be Smith behind center with McGowan just to his left. Now McGowan moves over to quarterback. It's going to be a snap to McGowan. Man come in motion. Option play again. McGowan pitches. Stopped in the backfield. Nice play there by the Trojan defense. The Trojans are ready for that option play. The end took the quarterback. The corner took the pitch man. Tackle for loss there. The ball did come loose, but the Bulls were able to cover it, making it second and 11. And that will run the clock down to the end of the first quarter. Your OBA Trojans lead 22-14 to 14 after one. We're going to take a break here at obatrojans.tv. So we are back here at Commitment Field. As Balco, second and 11. It's going to be an option play to the near side. Pitch is going to be a quarterback pass, and he's got a man open. Tipped by Mendoza. Great play from Caleb Mendoza, breaking up a wide open receiver, breaking up the play for a wide open receiver. So nice play there from Mendoza as the option play turned into a halfback pass there. Nathan Smith pitched it over to Jordan McGowan, the Trojan defense kind of bit on that and took a step forward. That was just enough for receiver Deacon Martin to come free, but Mendoza comes flying over from the opposite corner position to break it up. Shift here from the offense. It looks like Conkle wide to the left. No, nope, Conkle is at quarterback now. They're going to look to throw here, and they're throwing it deep. That ball has a little wobble to it, but he's open. McGowan pulls it in, gets behind the Trojan defense and pulls it in. Down at about the 28-yard line, first down, Balco Forgan. High-octane offense from Balco. A lot of Nathan Smith, a lot of Jordan McGowan, and a little bit of Peyton Conkle is proving lethal so far for this Trojan defense. Jake Colby with a stop there on Smith. Trojan defense would love to see more than more of that. Jake Colby, one of the leaders on this Trojan defense with 89. He leads them in total tackles, 89. Leads the team in tackle for loss with 11 and leads the team in sacks with 10. So this Trojan defense leans heavily on number 35. Second and six. Smith at quarterback again. He's going to keep this one. And there's Colby again. Another tackle for loss, Jake Colby. Looks like Jake Colby is taking it personal, this uh, offensive success for Balco Forgan, and he's decided that he's had enough using his speed and leverage to get around those big offensive linemen from Balco. So there's the snap. 
Broken play, and Colby again in the backfield. Jake Colby running free in the Balco backfield. Another tackle for loss. This one a big loss of about seven yards is going to make it fourth and 12 or 13 for Balco. So fourth down, Balco in four down territory. A shift here again. We'll see what they do offensively. McGowan to the near side. Conkle in at quarterback. He's kind of their throwing option. Colby in the backfield again. He's going to break up the play. The ball's loose on the ground, and it's going to be recovered by the Trojans. First down OBA at the 35-yard line. Jake Colby single-handedly stops Balco. That's the first defensive stop of the game. Four consecutive stops for number 35, Jake Colby. This time he knocks the ball loose. Trojans fall on it. First down, OBA. Great series for the senior, number 35, Jake Colby. That is why he leads the team in tackles, tackles for loss, and quarterback sacks. Jake Colby making a statement for the Trojan defense. The Trojan offense back on the field. It's going to be a handoff to Easton up the middle. Going to be positive yardage. About a four-yard gain for number 12, Ian Easton. He averages about seven yards per carry. So actually, Balco, the Balco defense is doing a really good job against this Trojan offense. Easton, Cheatham, Boydston all average well over five yards per carry. And uh, they're not, other than a couple of long runs from Cheatham, probably not averaging that tonight. Boydston in the shotgun, two running backs in the backfield with him. He pulls it out of Boydston, buying time. Squeeze, squeezes out, makes another move, squeezes out of that one. He ends, he's in, it's in, going to end up being positive yardage for Boyce, about a two-yard gain, trying to buy time in the pocket. Somehow squeezes out of the grasp of, of two Balco defenders, then sidesteps another one and gains two yards for the Trojans. So take a negative and turn it into a, a positive. That's, that's actually more like a six- or seven-yard gain just because of what the loss would have been had he been tackled in the backfield. So third down for the Trojans, about five to go. Easton and Cheatham in the backfield for the Trojans. Boysen takes the snap. He's going to hand this one off to Cheatham, patiently running, patiently picking his way through. First down, he's off to the races, tripped up at the last second. Judd Cheatham, nice run there, tripped up as he was just about to break free. Again, that's number 20, Nathan Smith. He's kind of the speedster for these Balco Forgan Bulls, but great run there from Judd Cheatham, patiently waiting for his offensive line to do their job, which they did really well. Nick Be Beckman, Harrison Crow, blasting a hole open. Cheatham kind of picks his way through, gains about 17 yards on that one. First down Trojans at the Balco 42. 8.26 to go here in the second period as we head towards halftime. Boyston under center this time. Easton in the backfield. Cheatham comes in motion. Hand off to Cheatham, heading for the near side. He has blockers out front. Again, a patient run there from Cheatham. Gets out to about the 35-yard line. Another nice positive yardage gain of about seven, maybe eight yards there for Judd Cheatham. Nunez at Easton out in front, blocking along with tight end Jake Colby. Judd Cheatham does a really good job of, of not hurrying the play, trusting his blockers to do their job, and just waiting for the hole to open, and then he explodes through it. So second down for the Trojans. Cheatham comes in motion again. Fake handoff to Cheatham. Boyson rolls out to his right. He's looking deep. He's got Nunez behind the defense. A lot of traffic there. Ruled incomplete. Nunez and Kobe both running a deep pattern for the Trojans as the ball was in the air. The defender who was covering Kobe kind of peeled off and it ended up looking like Nunez had double coverage. It's just that both of the routes ended up being close together. I can't imagine they were designed that way, but that's just the way it ended up. And that'll bring up third down for OBA. Definitely going to be four down territory with 7.39 to go in the second period. Got Harry Nunez here on the near side. Jake Kobe at tight end. Judd Cheatham in the slot. Ian Easton in the backfield. Cheatham comes in motion. It's going to be hand off to Cheatham again around the edge. He's going to have the first down and more. He cuts it to the outside. He's grabbed from behind. Brought down by number eight. Eight, Jordan McGowan slung out of bounds, maybe a little bit after the play, but I don't think there was anything flagrant there. Nice, nice hustle play there from McGowan to drag Cheatham down after a significant game. It's going to be first down Trojans at about the 14-yard line as this Trojan offense taking their time now. I would imagine they want to score here, but don't leave Balco too much time 
before halftime. So the clock continues to tick. Play clock has 20 seconds on it. Game clock has 721. Stoppage of play here from the official who stopped the clock. The game clock is, clock is still ticking. Not sure what the discussion is about here as the uh, lead official, the white hat, comes over and says something to Coach Chris Kayot and then looks to the other side and, and yells something to the opposing coaching staff, Coach Regeer and the Balco coaching staff. So not sure what that was about. Boyson, he's going to keep this one, pick his way forward. Going to be inside the 10-yard line as Bodie Boyson on the carry. Looks like Cooper Rodkey with the stop there for Balco, one of those big linemen for Balco Forgan Bulls, number 77, Rodkey trips Boyston up as he was getting ready to make it into the second level. Trojans can get a first down without scoring. Tight formation, Cheatham going in motion. Snap to Boyston. He's going to keep this one again. Tries to get to the outside edge. Again, forward a little bit. Not much of a gain there. Only about maybe a yard, maybe two. Depends on the spot. They're going to spot it down at about the five-yard line, so that'll make it third and about two for OBA. 6.36 to go. As we've said several times, four-down territory for the Trojans. They don't punt very often. And so two plays to get two yards here for OBA. I would imagine we're going to see a steady diet of Boyson just going forward right here. And, of course, I'm wrong. He hands it off to Cheatham trying to get around the edge. He's going to dive for the pylon. No signal, so he's marked out of bounds at the two or three yard line. So that plant foot when, when Judd went to dive must have been on the sideline because he's marked out of bounds at about the two and a half yard line. But first and goal for the Trojans. So four plays to get two yards here for OBA. Voice and bringing the play in from Coach Chris Kayot and the coaching staff. Tight formation. Ian Easton and Cheatham in the backfield. Boyson just going forward there. Going to fall forward for about a yard. The line judge is marking it right on the goal line. So second and goal, but it's just outside the goal line. As the line judge is running into the pile there, he, he was running on the goal line. So it's, it's less than a yard to punch this thing in. 5.52 to go as the clock continues to tick. 23 seconds on the play clock, as you can see there on your screen. So Boyston again, this time they're going to roll out to the far side, and he cuts it up field, tripped up, touchdown OBA as Boyston falls into the end zone using that long frame to get across the goal line. Six more points for OBA, making your score 28-14 OBA over Balco Forgan. So we'll see a two-point conversion attempt here. Senior Holden Caldwell coming in, Ian Easton heading towards the sideline as the Trojans dip into their bag of tricks for another two-point conversion play. We'll see if they can get two this time after being stopped uh, the drive before last. Cheatham in the backfield. Colby at tight end. Going to be a pitch to Cheatham to the near side. Blockers everywhere. Cheatham makes one guy miss. Dives forward. And that's going to be short of the goal line. That one doesn't work. So no two-point conversion for the Trojans. Your score, OBA 28. Balco Forgan 14. So a two-possession lead for the Trojans with 5.41 to go here in the first half. Nice drive there from OBA. After Jake Colby and the OBA defense forced a turnover, the offense capitalizes and extends the lead. That turnover may prove costly for Balco Forgan and very key for OBA. As we move forward here, and wrap up the second half. So Balco Forgan been a quick strike offense so far here in the first half, led by senior number 20, Nathan Smith, and senior number 8, Jordan McGowan. A lot of different formations we've seen from uh, Balco Forgan here on the offensive side of the ball. Peyton Conkle's taking snaps at quarterback. McGowan's taking snaps at quarterback. Nathan Smith is taking snaps. And when those three aren't taking snaps at quarterback, one of them's at, at running back, one of them's at wide receiver. We've seen snaps where McGowan's at tight end, so they are moving things around a lot to try and confuse this Trojan defense. So we'll see if the Trojans can make another stop, led by senior Jake Colby. 
Harry Nunez with his first kickoff of the second quarter. In the first quarter, Nunez and the Trojans were kicking it quite deep. We'll see if we see a, a pooch kick here from Nunez or perhaps an onside. We'll see with the wind in his face now. 5.41 to go. I'd imagine you wouldn't want to give Balco too good a field position, so we might see Harry kick it deep here or as deep as he can. And we do. Nunez with a deep kick. Smith is going to field that at the five-yard line and head out across the 10, the 15 to the 20. Ian Easton sheds his blocker, makes a diving tackle. Great play from the sophomore, uh, for the junior, number 12, Ian Easton. Nathan Smith trying to use a blocker to get to the outside, and Ian Easton just sheds that blocker, dives at the feet, and brings down the senior from Balco Forgan. Just inside the 20-yard line. So Smith back in at quarterback. McGowan wide out here on the near side. Smith's going to keep this one, try and get around the, the edge. Colby in on the tackle there again. Number 35 making his presence felt. Harrison Crow, the middle linebacker in there, also with an assisted tackle. It's going to be a gain of about two, second and eight for the Bulls. Trojans have a couple of subs in there, giving Bodie Boyson a little bit of a rest just so he's not playing every down. Corbin Burrell in there uh, at the far defensive end or linebacker position, whatever you want to call it. Burrell adept at getting pressure on the quarterback as well. So it's going to be an option to the far side, and Burrell immediately in the backfield makes the stop. Smith nowhere to go. The whistle stopped play. Smith thought he uh, had escaped, but... Three Trojans defenders were just holding him still. Corbin Burrow gets into the backfield, puts his shoulder right into Smith's midsection and just holds him up. And then Colby and Crow join the, join the party and just kind of pick him up and hold him there. Uh, when they set him down, Smith took off as if the play wasn't over, but they had definitely stopped forward progress and the whistle had blown. The clock ticks 425 to go here in the first period. Smith at quarterback now is shipped. It'll be Conkle over to quarterback. McGowan wide to the near side. It's going to be timeout OBA. There was movement on the line, but OBA calls a timeout. A lot of shifting there, as, as we've talked about before, a lot of shifting uh, in that uh, balco Forgan offense, different guys moving to different positions, different spots, and the Trojan defense um, shuffling around to uh, meet those matchups, so to speak. It's a stiff uh, defensive task for the Trojan defense. They were up to it on the last drive, getting the first stop of the game for either team. Couldn't tell if uh, Conco was going for a hard count there, trying to draw off sides or not, but defensive coordinator James Cheatham, head coach Chris Kayot, did not like what they saw, and they signal for a timeout and stop things. So both teams trot back out on the field. Judd Cheatham, deep safety position. Caleb Mendoza on the far side. Harry Nunez on the near, near side. It's going to be a double pass, but Kobe's back there again. Jake Kobe just kind of pushes him to the ground. Another tackle for loss for the senior, number 35, Jake Kobe. Nathan Smith, Conkle threw a, a backwards pass to Nathan Smith, who was in the uh, out, out wide of the pattern, coming from his running back position. It was a backwards pass. Smith tried to gather it and throw yet another pass, but could not because senior Jake Kobe was all over him and just kind of pushed him to the ground. Didn't even really hit him, just kind of put two hands on him and shoved him down. So that'll bring up fourth and 18, and we're going to see our first punt of the game. Cheatham's going to let that hit the ground and get away from it. That's going to roll just outside of midfield and going to be down at the 49-yard line. So two consecutive stops for the Trojan defense, 3.29 to go here in the first half. We'll see if OBA can add some more points to their total before halftime. So Bodie Boyson and the Trojan offense trot back out on the field after two consecutive successful drives. I may be seeing things, but it looks like Bodie has a little bit of a limp, and that might be why he was not in there on 
on defense that last series, but just a slight limp from Boydston. You can't really notice it during play, but when jogging on and off the field, it looks like it. We'll keep an eye on that. Boydston back to pass. He's got Kobe in a crossing pattern. It's complete. Jake makes a move. It's going to be a first down. 40, 35, 30. Inside the 25. Ball goes loose. It's taken away for by Balco. First down, Balco at the 20-yard line. The ball just ripped out of Jake Colby's hands as, as they were falling to the ground. Number eight, Jordan McGowan, the senior, pulls the ball away from Jake Colby. That was a long gain, so kind of just as good as a punt, I suppose, there for the Trojans. Only the Trojans' seventh turnover of the season. So not a lot of turnovers for this Trojan offense. So the defense is called upon again with 3.19 to go here in the first half. Ball's loose. Bad snap. Trojans are all over it. Down in the backfield at the 10-yard line is Smith. Miscommunication on the snap. Smith looked like he wasn't ready for it, and the snap just goes right by him. Jake Colby, Harrison Crow immediately sprinting back there, hoping they can get their hands on the ball before Smith's able to recover. Smith falls on the ball. They fall on Smith. Tackle for loss again, Jake Colby. So now second at about 20, maybe even 21 here for Balco. We'll see if they put the ball in the air with McGowan wide to the far side of the field, one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Snap to Conkley. He's going to throw it to the flat to McGowan. He's just going to try and get some positive yardage here. Nunez grabs hold, forces him out of bounds. That will stop the clock after about an eight-yard gain. It's kind of just kind of that same run play that the Trojans run. Instead of handing it off, they throw it to one of their best athletes and hope he can make some plays in the open field. And about a seven or eight yard positive yardage gain there before being forced out of bounds by Harry Nunez. Third and 14 now here for Balco. Now McGowan is at quarterback. Conkle is wide to the left side. Conkle coming in motion. McGowan's going to roll out to his right. Again, Trojans in the backfield. That ball's going to fall short. Incomplete. Trojan pressure. Trojan not re Trojan's not relying on coverage deep. They're relying on pressure to uh, break up the timing of the Valco Forgan uh, offense and working wonderfully here in the second quarter. Took the Trojans a little while to get some defensive rhythm going. Fourth and 13, we're going to see another punt here from McGowan. There's the snap. That thing goes almost straight up. Lands at the 50, this time rolls. Judge Cheatham just lets it roll, and the ball's down at about the 44-yard line. So the Trojan offense back on the field again, 2.21 to go in the first half. Another opportunity to extend this lead. So Boyson and the offense back out onto the field. Not accustomed to having turnovers. As I said earlier, only their seventh turnover of the season. First turnover for Jake Colby. Our first lost fumble. Jake did have a fumble early in the year, but recovered it himself. So first lost fumble for the senior. Boyson back to pass. Three receivers out in the route. He's going to find Nunez underneath. It's going to be positive yardage. About a nine-yard gain for the senior, number 21, Harry Nunez. Colby and Cheatham run deep routes, run off those safeties, and then Nunez just drags across the middle. So a nice eight-and-a-half, nine-yard gain there from Harry Nunez and Bodie Boydston. The clock continues to tick a minute 56 to go in the first half. Nunez wide to the near side. Jake Colby and Caleb Mendoza to the far side. Cheatham in the backfield. Another passing play for the Trojans. Cheatham on the wheel route. Boyston buying time. Cheatham puts on the brakes. Cuts outside. Boyston still buying time. Looking for Colby. That'll be incomplete. Jordan McGowan doing a great job in coverage there on Jake Colby. Senior against senior. Number eight and number 35 right there with each other. So that'll bring up third and two, a minute 38 to go. The incompletion stops the clock. So at this point, the Trojans have to be sure and get the secure the first down before they can worry about getting the touchdown, although those two things are not mutually exclusive. Nunez wide to the near side. Ian Easton in the backfield, Judge Cheatham in the slot. Cheatham comes in motion. Hand off to Cheatham trying to get the edge. He's got Easton out front. It's going to be a first down and then some. Judd Cheatham with the carry brought down at about the 38-yard line. About a 10-yard gain for Cheatham. 
making it first down Trojans. I don't know what that play's called in the huddle, but they might as well just name it Old Faithful because if you need 8 to 10 yards, you can run Judd Cheatham in motion and pitching the ball. And with that offensive line doing their job, he almost always gets 8 to 10 yards. Cheatham in motion again. Boyson hands this one off to Ian. He's up the middle, and he's got running room. Scampers forward, brought down at about the 25-yard line. It's going to be just inches short of the first down, it looks like. Nope, they mark it. First down, Trojans. Ian Eason with a 10-yard carry. Nice play call there from Coach Chris Kay out in the offensive staff. Everyone looking at Cheatham. Boyson puts it into Ian Easton's belly, and he ramble, rambles for about 10 yards. Delightful play there from the Trojan offense. Boyson in the shotgun formation this time. Receivers wide on either side of the field. He fakes the handoff to Cheatham. He finds Mendoza getting across the middle. Mendoza puts a move on, makes a man miss, cuts back to the inside, dives forward to about the 11-yard line. Nice run there from Caleb Mendoza, number four. We've said the story many times. This is the first time Caleb Mendoza has ever played organized football. Growing up in Hawaii, his father's in the military. Uh, from Hawaii, their family moved to Alaska. Neither state a big football state. It is going to be a first down Trojans. So this, this is Caleb Mendoza's first football experience. He's already made a great play on defense and now one on offense. Hand off to Cheatham. He cuts up the middle. It's going to be positive yards. Scampering forward. Dives forward. Brought down at about the two and a half, maybe three yard line. The Trojans can get a first down without scoring. The yard marker is at the one-yard line. So there's going to be a timeout on the field here with 24 seconds to go here in the first period. Timeout. Trojans want to get those points on the board before halftime so they, they can take their time here, use a timeout, choose the uh, best play from their playbook that can hopefully get them about three yards. So far this game, every time the Trojans have been down in this territory, it's been a steady diet of Cheatham and Boydston on the ground. Maybe this will be the time to pull out some play action, especially if you do a running play and don't make it. That'll keep the clock running, make you burn another timeout. So this might be the time for some play action for the Trojans. They have not used it in short yardage situations before, and we know that they have that in their arsenal. They do a good job in play action with a fake handoff and finding Colby or Nunez dragging across the middle of the field as Bodie Boyston is adept at buying time in the pocket. So there's a snap to Boyston. He actually hands off to Cheatham, and that's going to be a tackle for loss. As the clock runs with 15 seconds to go. So now a timeout from OBA. Obviously, they thought they saw something there, but uh, good job from the Balco Forgan defense to close that door and not let Judd Sheetham squirt forward for positive yardage, making it third and four. Two-yard loss for the Trojans. But at this point, I imagine they don't want four yards. They want five because five will put them in the end zone. 14 seconds to go here. Playoff action from Commitment Field on the campus of Oklahoma Bible Academy. Enid, Oklahoma, as OBA hosts Balco Forgan in OBA's first eight-man playoff game in recent memory. So the Trojan offense walks back onto the field. Seems like Coach Kayot and the uh, coaching staff had a play ready, so they, they got it called, and they've got their personnel in there waiting for Balco Forgan to take the field here with 14 seconds to go. Third and four, fully expect a pass play here, and with an if, it, if it goes incomplete or doesn't score, they would get another shot on fourth down. So Boyson's going to roll out to his right. Pass play in, in the end zone. Touchdown, OBA. Long time from the lineman to get a signal there. Jake Colby, the tight end, just kind of ran forward about five yards, turned around and just sat down in a hole in the defense. Boyson fired that thing right into Jake's stomach. Touchdown, OBA. Jake Colby adding to his tally for the day. Making up for that fumble, you know Colby wanted to get that one back, uh, and he does in the form of six points. Ten seconds to go. OBA 34, Balco 14, as the Trojans will go for two here. 20-point lead for OBA. So we've got Judd Cheatham wide to the left. Harry Nunez just inside of him. Boyce is going to roll to his right. He's going to try and pick his way forward. Brought down just shy of the pylon. 
Stopped shy. Two-point conversion is no good. Let's give Balco credit on that. They've done a great job um, with OBA. They've scattered OBA's two-point conversion package uh, because usually when OBA goes for two, it's money in the bank. But OBA leads 34-14 to 14 with 10 seconds to go here in the first half over the Balco Forgan Bulls. Obviously, they're going to want Harry Nunez to kick this as deep as he possibly can, despite the fact that he's kicking it into the wind. They don't want to give Balco any kind of advantage. We might see some kind of squib, but I doubt it would be an onside. They would probably go a little bit deeper with it to try and force some time off the clock from the Balco special teams. If you put it too high in the air, you give Balco an opportunity to call a fair catch, and then they get to run an offensive play. So I'm not the expert coach Chris Kayot is, so I'm sure he's thought through all of this, and on top of that, he scouted the opponent, and I have not. So we'll see what Harry Nunez does with this kickoff. Ten seconds to go here in the first half. Our game today brought to you by Jansen GMC. www.jansengmc.com. -E when you're in the market for a new vehicle, go visit our friends at Jansen. So Nunez lines up to kick. And kind of a pooch kick, and it's going to hit the ground, and the Trojans are going to recover. The Trojans recover that at the 46-yard line. Ball only had to travel 10 yards, and it traveled about 14. Pooch kick from Nunez, and OBA has the ball with nine seconds left. Bodie Boyson's arm, arm definitely has the strength to get it to the end zone from the 47-yard line, that's for sure, even with the wind in his face. We'll probably see OBA go for the end zone as they bring in speed. Kayla Mendoza, speed and hands group in there for OBA. Mendoza in for Easton. Bodie Boyson definitely limping as he heads out to the huddle. You can't really see it during play when he's carrying the ball. He doesn't show it. But when he heads out to the huddle, there's just an awkward stride that isn't normally how Bodie runs. And so probably something they want to check out at halftime. Colby wide to the right. Mendoza in the slot. Judge Cheatham in the backfield. He's going to run a wheel route. We know that. Boyson buying time. Looking deep. He just lets it fly. He's going to find. Oh, move there from Nunez. If he gets a block. If he can get a block. Oh, and brought down at the 21-yard line as time expires in the first half. Couldn't find anybody deep. Found Nunez underneath. And so that'll be the half. We'll have a 15-minute halftime here at OBA. Nice completion there. Nunez needed one more block, needed to make one more move, and he might have been able to break free and get to the end zone. But for now, that'll be good. OBA up by 20, 34 to 14 at the half. Let's take a break and hear from our sponsor, Jansen GMC on OBATrojans.tv.
Welcome back to Commitment Field here in Enid, Oklahoma. Beautiful night for football here on the Southern Plains. A nice north breeze blowing as it's just under 40 degrees here in Enid. Not quite a full moon tonight in the northeast sky. As your OBA Trojans lead, Balco Forgan Bulls 34-14 at halftime. Some other scores from around Class B. Ringwood leads Turpin 38-12 at halftime. Velma Alma in the second quarter leads Canton 44-0, so dangerously close to that 45-point mercy rule. At halftime, Warica leads Southwest Covenant 22-18. That would be the second-round matchup. The winner of that one will take on the winner of our game here tonight in the next round. Other scores, Wetumpka leads Yale 54-20. Arcoma trailing Caddo 46-0, and actually that just hit halftime, so that'll be a 45-point mercy rule for Caddo. Walika leads Barnsdall 38-16. Sealing has already mercy ruled Wilson 70-6. Sealing sitting there at 9-1, their lone loss coming to these OBA Trojans. Dewar has also defeated Gans 70-6. to So a couple of playoff games already over here tonight. Pioneer Pleasant Vale leads Davenport 32-6. to Kyoto leads, leads Weber's Falls at halftime 14-8. to Defensive struggle there. In the second quarter, Laverne leads Pond Creek Hunter 48-16. to Covington Douglas leading Surreal 22-0. As they move through halftime, just as we are here, Hollis at halftime leads Cherokee 38 to zero. Regent Prep 42 to zero over Summit Christian over in Tulsa, and Welch six, Quinton 54. Five minutes to go in the second quarter there between Welch and Quinton. So a lot of Class B football going on tonight. Your number one ranked OBA Trojans have their hands full with the Balco Forgan Bulls, a 20-point lead, 34-14. to 14. As we said, the winner of this match will take on the winner of Warica and Southwest Covenant. The Trojans already possess a victory over Southwest Covenant early in this season. Both teams are very different than they were when they met way back in August. The score of that game is Warica 22, Southwest Covenant 18, so a close one there. In Warica, at 18 to 22 is your score. So as we prepare for the second half, we're about two and a half minutes out from the beginning of the third quarter as both teams are on the field warming up. We'll take a break here and hear from our sponsor, Jansen GMC. Welcome back. As you can see, the clock on the scoreboard ticking down. Just under two minutes left in halftime. Here, OBA Trojans against Balco Forgan Bulls. Lots of folks in the stadium here tonight to watch the first OBA playoff action in three years as the Trojans look to go a long way this year in Class B as they tr attempt to prove that they are worthy of that lofty number one ranking. I'd like to thank our title sponsor tonight for our playoff stream, Jansen GMC here in Enid, for all your vehicle needs. Contact our friends J at Jansen GMC. They will take good care of you. I speak from experience. I've bought vehicles there myself, and they take good care of you. Quality product with excellent service from Jansen. As always, OBA very thankful for all their corporate sponsors. The athletic program here at OBA is funded solely by sponsorship. Uh, no tuition money goes towards athletics here at OBA. So our corporate sponsors are vital uh, to our athletics programs here at Oklahoma Bible Academy. Big shout out here 
from Enid to one of those sponsors, Deer Creek Mountain Camp in Bailey, Colorado. If you need a place to have your retreat, uh, your school retreat, church retreat, uh, an amazing wedding venue in Bailey, Colorado, uh, if you're one of those folks that wants a beautiful destination wedding, contact our friends Brent and Tanya Croker at Deer Creek Mountain Camp, and they'll get you taken care of as they watch tonight's action from what I am sure is an amazing view here in mid-November in the mountains. I don't know. Maybe Brent can send me a message and let me know, but I'm guessing that they are looking out at some snow-covered aspens right about now as we prepare to kick off the second half. OBA Trojans 34, Balco Forgan Bulls 14. Trojans will start in the south end zone, kicking it towards the north, which will give OBA the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. Nunez has the ball teed up and ready to go, just waiting for the signal, and here we go for the second half. Another pooch kick from Nunez, this time to the near side. The ball's on the ground, that's going to be recovered. Judge Cheatham's all over that one. Trojan ball at the 35-yard line, second consecutive pooch kick for the Trojans, recovered by OBA. Beautifully executed pooch kick. Nunez put that right in the gap where there were no Balco Forgan Bulls. That ball skipped on the ground, and Ch Judd Cheatham was on it before the second bounce. Balco Forgan, no one even in the neighborhood to get that ball. Great kick there from Harry Nunez, the senior, contributing through special teams here tonight. So OBA started the game with the ball. They will start the second half with the ball as well. One second came off the clock, 11.59 to go here in the third quarter. OBA looking to build on that 20-point lead. Boyce in the shotgun formation. Judd Cheatham right next to him at running back. Boyce is going to drop back and pass right off the bat. Looks over the top. Looks like there's some miscommunication there as he overshoots Caleb Mendoza. I don't know if he thought Caleb was going to do a like an out and up. Caleb just did an out route, and that ball sailed about 20 yards over his head. I think Bodie was expecting to Caleb, Caleb to plant his foot and head up field, uh, and Mendoza kept going towards the sideline. So a little miscommunication there from the Trojan offense in the first play from scrimmage here in the second half. Mendoza going in motion to the far side, Boyston under center. Cheatham goes in motion. Hand off to Judd Cheatham. He immediately plants his foot and stops. Now he cuts it outside. Get outside. Lots of Balco Forgan Bulls out there. He's going to be stopped for no gain, making it third and ten for OBA. The Bulls were ready for that look. Cheatham tried to cut up field and get through the middle, but that defensive line for Balco Forgan has a considerable size advantage and they were not um, budging and so Judd tried to bounce it outside with no success no gain there on second down for Cheatham Boyson in the shotgun formation Cheatham wide to the near side Nunez wide to the far side Ian Easton stays back in coverage it's going to be an out route for Cheatham complete down at the 18 yard line first down Trojans just a timing route there for the Trojans Cheatham going hard. He's been going deep to the end zone a lot. He just slammed on the brakes. Defensive back could not react quick enough. The ball met him as he turned and made his cut. Nice throw there from Boydston right on target. Only Judd Cheatham could catch that or it would have been incomplete. First down OBA. Beautifully executed timing pattern there by the senior quarterback, Bodie Boydston, and the junior running back, Judd Cheatham. So we got Harry Nunez wide to the near side of the field. Jake Colby. Wide to the far side of the field. Another pass from Ch uh, from Boyson. He's looking for Colby. That's picked off. Thrown just behind Colby. Picked off by McGowan, and he just goes down. Not really tackled. Beckman and Colby were there, but uh, McGowan just goes down. So Trojans unable to take advantage of converting that onside pooch kick. Unable to punch it in and extend this lead. Second turnover of the night for the Trojans, which is very unlike them. Only six turnovers all of regular season, and now they have two in one game tonight. So McGowan takes the direct snap. Corbin Burrell there wraps him up. Forward progress is stopped after about a three-yard gain. So 
So second and seven for the Bulls. Game clock continues to tick as we approach 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Looks like that's Smith at quarterback now. He's going to run an option play. Now just keep it himself, and he's met immediately by the Trojan defensive line. Harrison Crow right in there. Nathan Smith was in at quarterback this time. McGowan was at running back. They, they gave an option look, and then Smith just kept it up the middle, and Crow was having none of that. Maybe a one-yard gain, if that. Jake Colby also in on the action. Jackson Crow also in there. So third and about seven and a half or eight. A lot of shifting on the Trojan defense now. Motion. McGowan keeps it up the middle. Stopped. Going to be short of the first down. Holden Caldwell with the tackle. McGowan obviously carries a heavy load for this Balco Forgan offense. Hurry up. No huddle here. McGowan wide to the near side. Now Conkle at quarterback. They're just going to try and ram it forward. The ball comes loose. It's on the ground. McConkle covers it. Marked down just shy of the 30-yard line. Officials timeout for a measurement. So they tried to hurry up play, just do a quarterback sneak up the middle. It was stuffed. The ball was stripped. It bounced once. Was scooped up by Conkle, and he just kind of tried to dive with it on the bounce, advancing the fumble. It's going to be really close. And just shy of the first down. Turnover on downs. OBA defense hold, holds fast. Nice defensive stand there from the Trojan defense. Balco was almost able to make lemonade out of those lemons, but not quite just inches short of the first down. So the Trojans will take over. Just inside the 30-yard line, the 29 and three-quarters yard line. Boyson up under center. Cheatham in the near slot, now goes in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Cheatham. He's going to cut it up the middle, jumps over the pile, scrambles forward, stays on his feet. Brought down just shy of the 25-yard line. It's so about a five-and-a-half-yard gain there for Judd Cheatham, making it second and five. Hard-earned yards there for the junior, number 10, Judd Cheatham. Trojans now very deliberate in their offense, taking their time. Obviously, they want to get points, but in no hurry to do it, letting that clock run as much as they can. So Boyson takes the snap, hands off to Cheatham. He'll head to the near side. Caught in the backfield, but he squirts free, runs into his own blocker, heading forward, still grinding forward, still grinding forward, finally brought down. About a three-yard gain there for Judd Cheatham. A whole herd of bulls in there on the on the tackle there. See what I did there? Herd of bulls. Get it? Levi Milliken leading the way for Balco Forgan on the tackle. So that'll make it third and about one and a half, two yards for the Trojans. Boyston still in there at quarterback. Up under center, though, not in the shotgun formation. Hand off to Cheatham. Picking his way, patiently running, grinding forward. Gets across the 20-yard line. And they signal first down Trojans, Judd Cheatham. Very patient offense here. Seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. As the, they now wind the clock after setting the chains. Trojans nice and deliberate in their pace. Marching down the field, mostly on the ground. Again, Cheatham and Easton in the backfield. Harry Nunez to the near side. Boyston rolling out to his right. Play fake. Really nobody to throw to. Buying time off his back foot. Looks deep for Nunez. He kind of throws it over the outside shoulder of Harry Nunez. Harry would have had to make a spectacular one-handed catch, but it was going to be Harry or nobody. So nice decision there from Boyston. As the pocket kind of broke down around him, Bodie tried to buy some time, but no one was able to come free. Nice coverage there from the Bulls' defense. 
So second and ten for OBA, seven minutes, exactly seven minutes to go in the third quarter. That's the first pass play in quite a while for OBA. Boyson takes the snap, hands off to Cheatham. Again, up upfield, but again, positive yardage for number 10. Judd Cheatham brought down by number 20, Smith from Balco. About a six-yard gain for Cheatham brings up third and four for OBA. At this point in the second half, the Trojans have dominated the time of possession since halftime. They took that onside kick and marched downfield. Unfortunately, an interception stopped that drive, but Balco went four and out. And now the Trojans again with a very time-consuming drive underway. Just outside the 10-yard line, need about four yards to get the first down. First down's about the nine. Boyson takes the snap. Again, a handoff. Again, it's Cheatham. Again, he picks his way patiently down inside the 10-yard line, down at about the six. That'll move the chains. First and goal, OBA at the six-yard line. 6-10 to go in the third period. Trojans showing that they can play multiple styles. They can be a quick strike offense, or they can be a very deliberate, ground-oriented, grind-it-out kind of offense, and that's what they're doing so far here in the third quarter, content to get five or six yards of play and, and just march down the field slowly. Receivers on both sides. Cheatham's comes in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Easton up the middle. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage is going to be brought down just shy of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Ian Easton with about a four-and-a-half-yard gain there. Nice play there. One of those big defensive linemen has got a paw in there and kind of tripped up Easton. And he stumbled forward and was able to definitely make positive yardage and then finally brought down just outside the one-yard line. So second and goal for OBA, 5.13 to go here in the third. Boyston under center. This time he hands off to Cheatham again. Burrows his way forward. Touchdown, Trojans. Judd Cheatham gets low. And as they say in football, the low man wins. Judd Cheatham gets low and kind of gets under the tackle. Touchdown, OBA. As the Trojans will line up, they extend their lead to 40-14 to as they prepare to go for yet another two-point conversion. One of the main weapons in the Trojans' two-point conversion arsenal is, is Bodie Boyson on the run, but he's limping pretty badly now, so I'd be surprised to see him run it. He's going to hand it off to Easton up the middle, and he powers forward. No signals short of the goal line. Two-point conversion is no good. OBA 40, Balco Forgan 14. Trojans with a nice sustained drive there after a turnover. They make Balco go four and out, and then they march down themselves and put it in the end zone. 26-point lead at this point for OBA. 5.05 to go in the third period. We'll take a quick break and hear for our sponsor, Jansen GMC on obatrojans.tv. And we are back. Your OBA Trojans dominating the time of possession here in the second half with only five minutes and five seconds left to go in the third quarter. Harry Nunez set to kick off. Another pooch kick into open space. Caught over the shoulder, then dropped. That's going to be recovered by the Bulls. Deacon Martin, the senior wide receiver, was there, but he was running backwards and had to do kind of a Willie Mays over the shoulder catch and then he dropped it so he just fell on it didn't try and scoop it up and, and run with it smart play there from the senior tight end slash wide receiver slash running back as Balco moves these guys around a lot Smith at quarterback now McGowan at running back 
It's going to be an option play. Smith's going to keep it, takes a big hit, makes the pitch to McGowan. He gets outside of Mendoza and is headed up the sideline. Judd Cheatham, yet again, the low man wins. Cheatham gets low, chops the legs of McGowan out, out from under him, but not, after, not until McGowan gains about 12 yards. First down for the Bulls. Looks like McGowan, um, yep, Smith still at quarterback. Hand off to McGowan. This time he's met in the backfield. That's going to be no gain there. Corbin Burrell in there. Looks like Ian Easton in there. Trojans read that play really well. Steady diet of Jordan McGowan and Nathan Smith. Trojans really keying on those two players at this point. Smith, at quarterback, is going to be an option to the near side. He fakes the pitch, cuts it up inside. That's going to be a first down and then some. Shifty run there from Smith. Cheatham's not giving up. Rides him until he gets to the sideline and out of bounds goes Nathan Smith. So nice run there from the senior running back, Nathan Smith, of the Bulls. Smith still at quarterback. McGowan at running back. Option to the far side of the field again. Smith takes a hit. McGowan chopped down in the backfield. Nice play there. Judd Cheatham saw that play coming. Sprints up from his safety position. Makes a tackle in the backfield. Nice adjustment there from the Trojan defense to that option play that had garnered the Bulls two consecutive first down. Delightful defensive play there from the Trojans. Smith still at quarterback. McGowan in the backfield. Conkle at the slot. Smith gets the snap, keeps it, heads right up the middle. He's going he's gonna to get a couple of yards on that, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage before being brought down by Colby and Holden Caldwell. So third, about nine and a half here for the Bulls. Big third down play here. If the Trojans can get a stop on this drive, that would go a long way. The way the Trojans are eating up the clock, that would be a, a nice move for OBA. Smith takes the snap. Again, looking for the option. Again in the backfield. McGowan gets by the back by Colby and is brought down. It's going to be really close to a first down. Hard to see the marker from this angle. Harry Nunez with the tackle. And first down for the Bulls. So the script is pretty set at this moment for the Bulls. Option left, option right, option left, option right. They're running that option play with Smith and McGowan handling the ball. No one else has touched the ball the whole second half. Smith takes a snap. Option left this time. He's going to cut it inside, and he's going to be met for no gain there by the Trojan defensive line. That would be led by Jackson Crow with a nice play there for number 50. Harrison Crow there to help his brother finish that one off, but Jackson Crow penetrated the offensive line and made contact in the backfield. Second and nine for the Bulls. Smith still at quarterback. McGowan in the backfield. He's going to keep it another option. He makes another pitch. Almost pitched it over his head. McGowan still going, still going. Carried out of bounds. <laughs> Judd Cheatham got low and just kind of chopped his legs out from under him. And then just as Judd Cheatham kept running, McGowan was on his back for about three steps as he goes out of bounds. 2.04 to go here in the third quarter. Smith again, another. This is just a straight run to the left. I think there was a miscommunication there because Smith ran left, and he almost pitched that ball, and McGowan was not there. McGowan went right. So nice play there from the Trojan defense to make the stop. So second and goal. It was at the 8. Now it's at the 10. A little miscommunication, broken play. McGowan now wide to the left. Conkle at quarterback now. Now Smith at quarterback. Direct snap to Smith. He stopped after maybe a one-yard gain. He runs right up the middle. Again, Jackson Crow trips him up. Looks like Jake Colby finished it off there. Some, some, some assisted tackle there from Colby and Crow. I'll make it third and goal. Conkle in the backfield with Smith. McGowan wide to the left. Now Conkle shifts, and it's going to be a direct snap to Smith here. 
and it is. He runs to the right. He's going to be stopped short of the goal line on third and goal. Harrison Crow this time good, did a good job shedding his blocker, and he just broke down and stood in the gap and was able to put his shoulder pads right into uh, Smith's midsection. Mendoza comes out. Beckman comes in. Big package here for the Trojans. Smith at quarterback. McGowan at running back again. I'm going to expect we're going to see option. Oh, big hit there. Jake Colby comes down the line from the defensive end and just rocks Smith. Stop for no gain at all. Big fourth down stop there for the Trojans. Jake Colby steps up when the Trojan defense needs it. Smith never saw him come, and you could see Kobe just totally knocked him off balance there. So on comes Boydston and the Trojan offense after a big fourth and goal stand from the Trojan defense. 33 seconds to go here in the third quarter. I think Smith thought he saw daylight, and just as he looked like he was going to accelerate, Kobe exploded into him. So handoff to Cheatham to the far side. Scrambling and goes down after a short gain. Trojan's going to be safe down here so close to their own goal line. Nineteen seconds left to go in the third, and I think the Trojans are going to let that clock run down uh, to end the third period as the play clock's at 26. So ten seconds to go in the quarter, and... Boyston's walking to the sideline acting like he's getting ready to take his helmet off, so they're going to let the clock run down and the third period expire. They'll get the wind at their back for the fourth quarter, and they have a 40-14 to 14 lead. So the number one team in the state, 26-point lead going into the fourth quarter against a stout Balco Forgan Bulls team. Trojans looking to have a good sustained drive here, eat up a lot of clock, and get points at the end of the drive. And that would just about do it. That would make it really hard to come back if the Trojans could push this lead up over 30 with this drive. But they've got a second and eight ahead of them before they can think about that. We'll take a quick break here as we get ready for the fourth quarter on OBATrojans.tv. And the fourth quarter is underway. Snap to Boyston. Hand off to Easton. Heading around the far edge. Dragging a couple of bulls with him. Going to be a short gain there for Ian Easton now. Which will bring up third and about six. Maybe seven. For OBA. Maybe closer to eight or nine now that they mark it. So Coach Chris, Chris Kaya and the OBA coaching staff signal in the play. 14 play, seconds on the play clock, so they're going to have to hustle up to the line here to avoid a delay penalty. As here come the Trojans, 8-7-6. Tight formation for OBA. Hand off to Cheatham, trying to get around the near end. He makes a move and he gets away. Chopped down just outside, and a flag comes in late. Brought down about the 13-yard line. And that's going to be holding. holding 
Obviously, Balco will accept that because Cheatham had enough yardage for a first down. So they're going to march that back, and we're going to play third down all over again. So the Trojan offense needs to hurry up here. They're they're being delivered with the time, and I get it. You want the clock to run down, but they are they're getting dangerously close to a delay of game penalty here, and now they're going to have to burn a timeout with only one second left on the play clock. Timeout, OBA. So 10:42 to go in the game. The OBA offense deep in their own territory here, trying to eat as much clock as possible. Got caught a little bit there and had to burn a timeout before getting a delay penalty. It's third and eight. Really, it looks more like third and nine to me. Third and eight, eight for the Trojans. We have not seen very many Trojan passes here in the second half. Buddy Boyston with a noticeable limp. Hopefully that's not a lingering injury, but maybe just a short-term thing. We haven't seen Boyston run with the ball any here in the second half. He's handed it off to Cheatham and to Easton um, consistently, whereas early in the game we had a steady diet of keepers from the OBA quarterback. So Coach Chris Kayot and the coaching staff going to come up with the perfect 10-yard play here on third and nine, are looking to come up with the perfect 10-yard play here on third and nine as the Trojans hope to convert and maintain possession so they can keep that clock running. So two receivers wide to the far side, Jake Colby wide to the near side. We're going to see Boyston put it up, a screen pass to Cheatham, and he's going to have the first down and then some. He's running in the open field, cuts to the outside. That's going to be a big play across the 35-40, steps out of bounds at the 43-yard line, and then tackled after he was five yards out of bounds. Here comes the flag. Little loss of composure there from Balco. Jason Freeman, a senior for Balco. Judd Cheatham running wide open in the open field, sees that his angle is cut off, so he just steps out of bounds. And then number 12, Smith, just hits him and drags him to the ground. Cheatham was five yards out of bounds when he hit the ground. And so that's going to be an unnecessary roughness penalty on Balco, which is going to give the Trojans 15 more yards, putting it well into Balco territory at the 39-yard line. Nice play call there from the coaching staff. We were looking for, for nine yards, and we got about 50. So nice job there with the play calling. Boyston in the shotgun formation. Nunez comes in motion. He's going to fake it, then hand off to Cheatham to the near side. Going to be positive yardage. Dives forward to about the 35. About a five-yard gain there for the junior running back. Clock is ticking, 10-14 to go here in the fourth quarter. Trojans looking to eat time here offensively. And then I would imagine we'll see a defense that would be okay with Balco marching down the field. They just want them to take time to do it. So Boyson up under center, Easton in the backfield. Cheatham comes in motion. Lots of movement on the line. Hand off to Easton up the middle. Still grinding, still grinding. Strong run there from the junior. Ian Easton just... A lot of great individual effort there from number 12. First, first impact came in the backfield. Ian spins off of that one and it just powers through three more Balco blockers for about a four-yard gain. So it's third and less than one. Probably a seven-yard net gain for Easton after first contact because he was hit in the backfield. Nice run there for Easton. 40-14 to 14 is your score. Boyson takes the snap and is just going to fall forward. That's his first carry of the second half. It really is just a kind of a dive forward to get the first down. So they'll move the chains, although they haven't moved them yet. No, Still no signal. There they go. They finally see. 
That was a little confusing there. It was about a three-yard dive, and they only needed about a foot. So first down, Trojans, as they wind the clock right at nine minutes to go in the game. Harry Nunez wide to the left, Judd Cheatham in the slot. Cheatham comes in motion. They fake the pitch to Cheatham. Boyson keeps it, makes a move, heading downfield, chop down, but it's going to be first down Trojans. So two consecutive running plays from Bodie Boyston catches Balco. I mean, obviously, if I can see it, they can see it too. Bodie le limping quite a bit when he heads on and off the field with the plays. Obviously, Balco can see that, and they're keying on the running backs. Bodie Boyston sucks it up, whatever whatever pain he's in because of that limp. He sucks it up and has two consecutive first down. Uh, I guess they didn't give him a first down. It's second in less than a yard, but two consecutive runs there for Boyston. Boyston in the shotgun, receivers in the slot. He's going to swing it out to Cheatham. Positive yardage, first down Trojans. Completely pass to Judd Cheatham. That's just like that pass play that's really just a running play. Get the ball in Cheatham's hand in open space and let him let him create something. He created just enough for a first down, and they wind the clock now. Just that little uh, three-down series took a minute off the clock, uh, just over eight minutes to go in the game. Boyston in the shotgun, Cheatham in the slot. They fake the pass to Cheatham. Now Boyson keeps it, buys time, dumps it off. Ball goes incomplete. That's the last thing OBA wanted was an incomplete pass, but Boyson good to get rid of the ball instead of taking a loss. Uh, that'll stop the clock just under eight minutes, 7.59 to go in the game. They faked that swing pass out to Cheatham. They've run that play several times where they swing it out to Cheatham. They faked that, but Balco did not bite on that fake. They had good coverage downfield on Nunez and Colby. Uh, Boyson tried to buy a little time to see if somebody could come open, but it didn't work out, so Boyson had to throw it away. Second down, three receivers out. Boyson in the shotgun. Boyson dropped backs to pass. Looking to the end zone. That kind of uh, ended up in no man's land between two receivers. Cheatham and Corbin Burrell were out there in the route, and it went over the top of Cheatham and just short of Corbin Burrell, so just slightly off target. Whatever's going on with that foot for Bodie, probably, uh, it looks like it's his plant foot, and so maybe a little difficult to, to, to plant when throwing uh, kind of affected his accuracy there. That'll stop the clock after only about six seconds came off the clock there. So third and ten for the Trojans. Curious to see if they don't get a first down here, will they go for it or they will let Harry Nunez kick it with the wind at his back? He, he has that kind of leg. So Boyson in the shotgun formation, takes the snap. Looking for Jake Colby in the end zone, just off the fingertips. In, Colby in the back of the end zone. Ian Easton cut off his route at the front of the end zone, and the defender kind of hesitated there for a second. And Bodie Boyson tried to find that little window to sneak it in there, just, just off target, just by half of an inch, just nicked the top of Colby's fingertips. Jake's made some pretty spectacular catches this year. Couldn't pull that one in, so that'll bring up fourth and ten for the Trojans. As it looks like the offense is going to stay on the field, Nunez has plenty of leg to kick it from the 15-yard line. It'll be a 27-yard field goal. He has plenty of leg to get that, but the Trojans are going to go for it, and now there's a timeout signaled by OBA. More conversation is needed for this one. Either find the perfect play or kick the field goal. We'll see what they decide when we come back from this break at obatrojans.tv. So we are back 
And after some discussion, they decide to let Harry Nunez kick this to kick this up. And that is way good. Three points for the Trojans. Harry Nunez kicked that one. That would have been good from 40 yards. Plenty of leg on that one for Nunez. So add three points to the Trojans' total. 43-14 to 14 is now your score. Good job, Holder. Judd Cheatham gets the ball down. Harry Nunez gets it through the uprights with room to spare. Making it look easy. Always nice to have that weapon in your arsenal. Doesn't get used a lot because of the proficiency of this OBA offense, but when it's needed, Harry Nunez is there and gets the Trojans three points. There's 7.43 to go here in the fourth quarter. So we have a 29-point Trojan lead as the special teams take the field. At this point in the game, with 7.43 to go, the Trojans really wouldn't mind a nice long drive from Balco. Even if they scored at the end of that drive, uh, a long time-consuming drive would be a good thing for the Trojans as they try and finish this thing off with under eight minutes left to play. Nunez has it teed up, and he'll send it deep. That's going to be over the deep man's head, into the end zone, touchback, Harry Nunez and the Trojans. We talked about this earlier in the game, what an effective weapon that is for the Trojan defense to be able to count on Nunez to put that thing in the end zone on kickoffs and know that the opposing team is going to start on the 20. That's a great peace of mind to be able to have. So here comes Balco Forgan. Again, the Trojans just want to avoid the quick strike here. They want to make Balco take time. Smith in the back, or uh, Conkle in the backfield. He's going to look to pass, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper. And now he pulls up and tries to throw it. Deflected by Nunez. Pass falls incomplete. Nice play there from Harry Nunez in coverage. Peyton Conkle takes the snap back in there at quarterback after playing running back and receiver and tight end in uh, other series. But Conkle is their throwing quarterback. Smith and McGowan are their running quarterbacks, and so he's in there now. Smith going in motion. The snap comes. It hits Smith. It's on the ground. And Trojan ball. Trojans recover. Jake Colby comes up with the ball. Devastating miscommunication there for the Balco Forgan Bulls. Smith goes in motion. And the ball gets snapped as he's crossing between the center and the quarterback, and it just hits him and is on the ground. Never, Smith was never looking for the ball there. And so big break there for the Trojans. Seven and a half minutes to go. I'm guessing we're going to see a whole lot of ground game here from OBA and try and eat as much clock as they can. At this point in the game, points don't really mean that much. Having the clock running does. Cheatham and Easton in the backfield. Hand off to Ian Easton. He picks his way forward. Maybe a one and a half yard gain there for Ian. Bringing up second and nine. But that has the clock running now with 7.20 to go in the fourth quarter. About 25 seconds on the play clock. And I would guess the Trojans are going to use every one of those seconds and snap it with under five seconds to go on the play clock. So Cheatham and Matt and Easton in the backfield again, handoff to Cheatham following his blockers. He bounces it to the outside. One man to beat cut inside. That's going to be a touchdown. Judd Cheatham. Great run there from the junior running back. Judd Cheatham looked as if the Trojans Goal was to run clock, but no, they're going to add some points to the total here. Six points, Judd Cheatham, great job by the offensive line, making space for the junior running back to get into the open. And once he gets into the open, there's only one man to beat, and he beats him. Touchdown OBA, that makes it 49-14. to 14. So two-point conversion.
Thought they might. We might see Nunez again just for the kick here, but we're going to see two-point conversion. Cheatham comes in motion. Hand off to Cheatham. Uh, mishandled there, so Boydson is just going to kind of eat it and go down. Maybe some miscommunication there for, for OBA. Because that is not what I – I don't think that's what was planned, but the damage is done. OBA 49, Balco Forgan 14. Great turn of events there for the Trojans. We'll be right back for the rest of the game. After this word from our sponsors at obatrojans.tv. And we are back, Commitment Field on the campus of Oklahoma Bible Academy. Your, your top-ranked undefeated OBA Trojans lead 49-14 to over the Bulls from Balco Forgan. 6.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Harry Nunez has it teed up for another kickoff. And we are back underway again. Nunez sends it deep. This one might be field. Nope, he lets it go over his head into the end zone. Touchback. For the Trojans, it'll be Balco Ball at the 20-yard line. Balco miscommunication really worked to the benefit of the Trojans on the last possession. So it looks like Conkle at quarterback with Smith in the backfield with him. Smith goes in motion. The exact same look they just showed. They didn't snap it into him this time. Conkle takes the snap, looks back to pass. Looking for a swing pass. He's hurried, and he's going to have to keep that one, and he's going to run it. Quick feet there from Conkle. He's going to have first down and then some. Still going, but brought down inbounds by Judd Cheatham. About a 28-yard scramble there for the senior quarterback, number zero, for Balco Forgan, Peyton Conkle. Clock running, six and a half to go. Conkle now hands off to Smith. Running play there, brought down. Contact coming the line of scrimmage. Smith is able to kind of battle forward for about a yard. It's like Holden Caldwell with the tackle there for the Trojans. Mendoza in coverage. Two receivers to the near side, only Mendoza in coverage. Conkle looking to throw. He goes deep. Ball falls incomplete. Harry Nunez in great coverage. I have no idea what that flag's about. The pass is incomplete. If anything, it looked like offensive pass interference to me because Nunez has Nunez had inside position. A lot of contact there, but it seemed to be initiated by McGowan. The ball hits the ground, incomplete is signaled, and it's actually unsportsmanlike conduct on the Trojans. So evidently something was said. That's unfortunate because that's going to give Balco Forgan a 15-yard penalty and a first down. You've got to maintain composure out there. A momentary lapse in composure gives the opponent a first down after you made a great play. That's just that's just not good. So first down, Balco. It's going to be a swing pass, and that's going to be incomplete. Pass goes into the dirt intended for Deacon Martin, senior wide receiver for the Bulls. So second and ten for Balco. Again, the Trojan defense okay with Balco marching the ball as long as the clock's ticking, but those incomplete passes stop the clock. Pass complete. Again, Deacon Martin, the target. 
Pass is complete, about a four-yard gain, but Caleb Mendoza out here on the corner makes the tackle and keeps the runner in bounds, which is key at this point, 5.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Steady diet of Peyton Conkle at quarterback now. After a whole lot of switching earlier in the game from Balco, Conkle is the man here. McGowan wide on the far side of the field by himself. Blitz there from the Trojans, going to force Conkle to run it, and he's going to keep it. He's going to get down the field. He's not going to – oh, the ball comes loose. Oh, out of bounds, though. He's forced – he's hit it about the four-yard line. The ball popped up into the air just like a big balloon. But unfortunately, it was floating out of bounds. Got a Trojan down on the field there. Corbin Burrell making his way to the sideline. Harrison Crow will head in there for Corbin. So first and goal, Conkle at quarterback, Smith at running back. Conkle's going to try and throw it, passes over the middle. McGowan again, touchdown, Balco Forgan. Jordan McGowan, quite the weapon here for the Bulls tonight. That'll make the score 49-20 to 20 with that six points for Balco as they line up and will go for two here. And obviously we can expect an onside kick. Smith at quarterback. Reverse play. McGowan looking to throw. Colby in pursuit. Takes the fake. He's the ground. McGowan's able to scamper in. Two-point conversion is good. We've seen a steady uh, diet of, of misdirection plays and, and attempted trick plays. We've seen uh, double passes. We've seen flea flickers. We've seen reverses. Balco just trying everything they can to try and get this Trojan defense off balance. And they were able to stretch, uh, force that one in for the two-point conversion, making the score 49-22 with 5.08 to go in the game. Obviously, we're going to see an onside or a pooch kick here from Balco. Uh, I would expect to see the, the hands team in there for the Trojans. So a costly penalty there gives Balco a first down, and they're able to go down and convert that. Trojans need to maintain that composure, especially in moments like this. You're so close to winning a playoff game, you've got to maintain composure and not give your opponent any opportunity. So Balco has it teed up. Lots of receivers and running backs in here, close to the ball. We're going to see that thing. Here it comes. Skips high. Picked up by Kobe. He's going to return it, and he could be gone. Jake Kobe scoops up the onside kick, heads up the field, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jake Kobe. Touchdown, OBA, the senior. Savvy play. The ball takes a nice big hop for him. The, the receiving team doesn't have to wait for it to travel 10 yards, and Kobe didn't wait. He ran up and grabbed that thing on the big hop and took it to the house. Not untouched, Jake Kobe, 6 points OBA. 45-22, uh, heads-up play there from Colby. So that extends the lead back to 33 points here. We'll see if the Trojans go for two or kick the extra point, and looks like Boydson headed on the field, so they'll go for two here. Cheat him in motion. Hand off to Easton up the middle. He's going to power in this time. Ian Easton with the two-point conversion for OBA. What a backbreaker for Balco. What a turnaround moment for the Trojans. As it looked like Balco, you know, with an onside kick, they go down and score. Maybe they have a little glimmer of hope. But instead, the onside kick takes a, takes a big hop. Jake Colby scoops it up and runs 55 yards to the house for the Trojans. 5.03 to go in the game. Your Trojans lead 57-22. to We'll be right back after we hear from our sponsors here at obatrojan.tv.
Welcome back to Commitment Field. 5.03 to go in the game. Your OBA Trojans lead 57 to 22 after a spectacular play from the senior Jake Colby. It's been Jake Colby night here at Commitment Field as he has made key play after key play. So Nunez lines up to kick it up. Harry Nunez also has had a really good game for the Trojans. Deep kick for Nunez. Smith's going to let it go, and it rolls into the end zone. Once again, touchback OBA. So it'll be first down Forgan at the 20-yard line. So McGowan wide to the far side of the field. It's going to be Conkle in there, quarterback, Smith in the backfield behind him. Conkle looking to pass. He's just going to throw it as far as he can. McGowan only ran about 20 yards, and Conkle threw it about 45 yards. McGowan broke off the route. Harry Nunez was in coverage, and McGowan broke off the route. Obviously, he and the quarterback reading different keys on that play. Conkle takes a snap, looking to his left, looking up the near sideline, flushed out of the pocket, and he's in trouble, forced to the sideline, and finally, big hit there from the Trojans as Conkle tried to throw it. Jake Colby there again. So Corbin Burrow gets into the backfield almost immediately, gets a hand on Conkle, forces him to scramble out of the pocket, and just as he tries to unload that pass, Jake Colby unloaded on him. They do call it an incomplete pass, so it'll be third and 10, 4.48 to go in the game. I don't think there's any doubt that if, if they get to a fourth down, we're going to see Balco go for it here. There, there's no sense in punting now. McGowan comes to the near side and will be wide on the near side along with Deacon Martin. Conkle in there at quarterback. Looking deep, got a, got a scissor action there. Picked off! Picked off! Harrison Crow drops back from his linebacker position. He's going to take it to the house! Touchdown, Harrison Crow! Conkle never saw the linebacker dropping into coverage, threw it right to Harrison Crow, who snags it and takes it to the house. Again, the Trojan defense steps up and makes a play. Six points, Harrison Crow making it 63-22. I keep talking about the Trojans should be content to run the clock, but they keep making plays that score points. Harry Nunez now on for the extra point. I would imagine with that limp, Coach Chaos sees no reason to trot Boydson out there and risk anything. So Nunez kicks the extra point. It's up and it's good. Plus one for OBA, making it 64 to 22. What a series of events here in the fourth quarter for OBA to just really open this thing up. One moment you think there might be a slight glimmer of hope for Balco to get back in this thing, and the next moment OBA has scored three touchdowns. And this thing is wide open. 42-point lead for the Trojans. One more big play like that, and, and it'll be a 45-point mercy rule game with 4.38 to go in the fourth. So the Trojans special teams, we will be back on the field. Bulls from Balco Forgan look a little bit shell-shocked after the events of the past few minutes. We have an onside kick recovered and run for a touchdown, and then a pick six from the Trojan defense. 15 consecutive points for OBA. Really open this thing up. So Nunez will tee it up and kick it off. This one goes deep and high, and again, Smith lets it go as it lands on the goal line. Touchback. Balco Forgan ball at the 20-yard line. So it looks like Conkle's still in there at quarterback. Smith at running back. McGowan wide to the near side. 
along with number six, Deacon Martin. Conkle takes the snap. It's going to be a design quarterback run here. And actually, that's Smith, not Conkle. He gets to the outside edge. Judge Cheatham gets a hold of him and just rides him out of bounds. Be a first down, Balco, at the 45-yard line. Nice run there from the senior, Nathan Smith, in what is likely to be his uh, last high school football action of his career at Balco. Smith just staying at quarterback now. He's going to do some running. Mendoza keeping keeping the angle on him, forcing him to cut inside. And he's tackled another first down for Smith, but they keep him from the sideline, keep him from going out of bounds. That keeps the clock running. So Caleb probably would have liked to have the tackle there, but good job keeping him inside, keeping the edge, so that the running back had to cut up inside away from the sideline. Smith at quarterback, McGowan at running back. And there's a collision in the backfield. Smith nowhere to go. There's Trojans everywhere. Jake Colby, Corbin Burrell, once again in the backfield. And then both of them kind of bend down and help Smith up. As there's a tackle for loss there, yet another one for Jake Colby and Corbin Burrell. Both of them will get an assist on that tackle because both of them were just right there. Looks like Conkle is in there at quarterback now, but Smith is also in the backfield. So hard to tell. McGowan wide to the right. Looks like it's going to be Conkle, so I'd expect a deep pass to McGowan out there on the edge. He does a post route, and then traffic, too much traffic in there. Jake Colby gets in there, disrupts the timing, and then Nick Beckman finishes it off. Beckman with a sack on the play. That's going to keep the clock running right at three minutes to go in the game. It's going to bring up third and 16. So Colby gets in there and disrupts the timing of the play, and Nick Beckman is right there to clean it up and gets credit for the quarterback sack for Beckman. Balco has lost their sense of urgency. There's there's not a lot of speed happening now. Looks like they're just playing out the string as we have Deacon Martin wide to this side, McGowan wide to the far side, Conkle looking to pass. He's going to he's just going to air it out, throw it as far as he can, and that's going to be about 7 yards out of bounds intended for Jordan McGowan. 2.31 to go. The clock stops on the incompletion. That'll make it 4th and 16 for the Bulls. As the Trojans can now kind of sense the inevitable. Defensive call here. They're going to call a kind of a uh, prevent defense. Push Judd Cheatham over a little bit so McGowan can't get over the top. Conkle back to pass again. Colby's in the backfield already. Burrell with pursuit. He hits Conkle right as he throws the ball. Corbin Burrell just plows him into the ground. The ball falls harmlessly to the dirt about seven yards downfield. And that's going to be a turnover on downs for the Trojans. Curious to see what the Trojans do here. Are they going to try and push it down the field and get the 45-point mercy rule, or are they just going to grind it and... Whatever happens, happens. I would imagine we're going to see a steady diet of handoffs to Cheatham and Easton. Keep that clock running, and if they break a tackle and go down and score, that would end the game two and a half minutes early. So up comes the Trojan offense. Ian Easton in the backfield. Judge Cheatham in the slot on the far side of the field. Cheatham's going to come in motion here. They're going to hand it to Easton just right up the middle, grinding, pounding. Nice run there from the junior. Stays right in the middle of the field. Keep that clock running. About a seven-yard gain for number 12, Ian Easton, with 2.12 to go in the ballgame. So Boyston brings the team up to the line. Tight formation. Easton in the backfield. Cheatham in the slot. Boyston just staring at the play clock. He's going to let that run down as far as he can. Try and get it down below five seconds now. As they snap the ball with five seconds left on the play clock. Hand off to Easton. First down. Trojans. Ian Easton with another strong carry for the junior. The referee goes ahead and winds the clock before they even set the chains. They're going to let this thing run out. Minute 30 to go in the game. 
Generally, you won't wind the clock until they set the chains, but everybody can see the writing on the wall here at this point with less than a minute and a half to go. We might just see the victory formation here three times, and that'll be the ball game. And that's what we're going to see. We're going to see Bodie Boyson take a knee here. Everybody in close in case in case the ball gets bumbled and fumbled. But Boyson's going to take the snap, back up a step, and take a knee. And that'll put that on the ground there. One Balco player taking that final play a little too seriously. Driving hard into the uh, OBA offensive line, and they all just kind of sidestepped and let him fly, <laughs> fly by into the ground. As the clock continues to run, 26 seconds on the play clock, 40 seconds left in the game. So we'll see one more snap here. When the play clock gets down below 10 seconds, the Trojans will snap and take another knee. And then that will be all she wrote as the Trojans will advance to the second round of the Class B playoffs. I'll see if I can pull up some scores here, courtesy of our friends at Squirtle. So Boyson takes the snap and the handshakes commence. Currently, Walrika leads Southwest Covenant 42-24 in the fourth quarter, so we're likely to see, barring some sort of miracle from our friends at Southwest Covenant, we're likely to see Walrika right here on Commitment Field next Friday night at 7 p.m. as the Trojans advance to the second round of the playoffs, defeating the Balco Forgan Bulls 64-22. Great showing here from the top-ranked team in Class B against a stout Balco Forgan team. Trojans with a very tough first round draw, but they prove worthy uh, of their ranking as they dispatch the Bulls, the team that went to the state championship, cha championship game last year, is dispatched in the first round this year, and the Trojans will advance to next week. So next week, right here, Commitment Field, OBA, versus either Warica or Southwest Covenant. Right now it looks like it'll be Warica, but we can't call that for sure just yet because that game's still going on. But... The OBA Trojans will be in action again next Friday night, taking on the winner of Southwest Covenant and Warica. We thank you guys for tuning in. Please support our sponsor, Jansen GMC. When you have a vehicle need, go see the folks at Jansen GMC. Uh, you can call them at 1-800-749-6537, or you can visit them at www.jansen, that's Jansen with a Z, J-A-N-Z-E-N, jansengmc.com. Check out their inventory next time you're in need of a vehicle. They'll take great care of you at Jansen GMC. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you back here next Friday night on obatrojans.tv.